Good morning. So if you've been wanting to start a kids arts and crafts club and something's been holding you back, then let's chat about it today and let's dive deep with a mindset session about fear. Fear is a dream killer. I'm Crystal. I'm co-founder of Canvas Club and the Creative Crafting Club. And my sister Stefania and I help creatives make money teaching arts and crafts to kids, whether it be online, in person, or through kits. So fear has been a recurring theme in our community. Um, let me know in the comments who's watching, where you're watching from, and then also let me know what are you fearful of. So themes that have come up in our community are things like um, and it relates to us as well, fear of failure, fear of starting, fear of uh, my husband not being on board, fear of not having enough time to do an arts and crafts club or to start a new venture, fear of committing to something and then not being able to follow through. Um, hi, Kirsty fear of losing money. There are so many fears. I mean, if you start thinking about it, you can just, the list will go on and on and on. Let me know what you are fearful of. So guess what? Everyone feels afraid. Everyone feels afraid. Even famous artists, even famous movie stars. I often look at movie stars and then I think, how can they have normal lives? How can they have kids and be famous and run these big careers? And not be overwhelmed and but guess what <laughs> everyone feels afraid even top athletes even ceos i mean can you imagine how scared elon musk must, must feel every time a rocket shoots in the air i mean he must be so fearful um every person you know and admire they all experience fear on a regular basis because it's human it's human to be fearful um, hi, Shaz. Hello, Stefani. So let me know what you are fearful of. I see Kirsty says feel fear of failure. I'm, I'm so relating to that, Kirsty. But this begs the question. So why is it that fear sometimes paralyzes people while others are actually able to move through it? I know that Kirsty has moved, moved through her fears because she's joined the Creative Crafting Club and she's setting up her Kids Crafting Club. And a massive shout out to you, Kirsty, for moving through your fears and taking that first step. So fears come in many forms as well. So let me know what happens to you physically um, if, if you get fearful. So from sweaty hands, um, I know I get I sleep really bad, like loss of sleep. So I wake up crazy hours and I'm awake. Um, naughty tummies. Uh, I know Stefani bites her nails. <laughs> um, I've even heard uh, somebody, my husband said, and um, he heard of somebody who whose fingertips get numb. Um, and then I know of a family member who gets panic attacks. Uh, let me know, how does your body respond to fear? Um, so fear will be, will be with you as long as you are alive. And we're going to just have to accept that. Um, it doesn't matter how much experience, success, or even fame you acquire, you will always feel fear. So don't have this illusion that one day you're going to wake up without fear and now you're going to think, oh, I'm ready. That's not how it works. Kirsty, share your journey. How did it work for you? How did you break through that fear when you decided to start your club? Okay, so... Let's chat about um, what we are fearful of. So Kirsty says, definitely tummy knots and voice tremors. Yes, um, I know of a team member of ours as well that gets voice tremors. And um, I know of a friend who actually, if she goes live, she gets um, spots, red spots on her neck. So, but you know what? People relate to, to, re to relate to things like that because it's human and they also experience their own fears and their own ways that their bodies react to fear. So it's, Great to show that vulnerability as well because it's relatable. Um, embrace fear motivates me to push harder. Absolutely, Kirsty. Okay, so let's chat about what we are fearful of. So for me, my biggest fear at the moment, and that's the other dreaded F word beyond fear, is fertility. So my hands are actually sweating and my body is trembling when I just say that word out loud. Um, it's an enormous and a gigantic fear that I personally struggle with. And um, 
a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine who has struggled with this same journey before, she said to me, just focus on your very next step. Because for me, the first thing that I want to do is I just want to freeze. I want to like freeze. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to <laughs> like do anything. And she said to me, just focus on your very next step. So what are you fearful of? I see that there's some comments popping up. I'll read them now. So in recent posts in our posts in our um, Creative Crafting Club um, members community, these are all Arts and Crafts Crafting Club owners, um, that, I've, that I saw was, um, I saw a post on um, a member being fearful of posting her Facebook business page um, and her tummy knotted up. And then another member shared that um, she was fearful to have the difficult conversation with the boss to uh, just cut off one day a week um, so that she could make time for her kids crafting club and could host, could host classes one day a week. And that made her squirm. Um, I remember, so we live in beautiful Cape Town, and I remember climbing Lion's Head the other day. It's this is a really beautiful mountain. I'm, I, I'm, I can actually see just a point of it sticking out from here. But um, there's, it's quite steep, and there's a part uh, where you have to climb a steel ladder. And we got to the bottom of the steel ladder, and I was with my son and my husband. My, hus my son was on my husband's back in his backpack. And I said to my husband, are you nuts? <laughs> There's no ways I'm doing that. I'm too old for that. And then he said, well, he's going to climb up there with Henry on his back. And then I said, no, you can't take Henry. He's too young. And then my husband said, what? You're too old. Henry's too young. <laughs> like, <laughs> who is this for then? I mean, it was so funny. But the result was that my husband gave me the nudge. He gave me the nudge to take action. So what happened was I got out of my comfort zone and growth occurred. Um, and let me know if you want me to share a pic of our incredible view when we got to the top. It was the most rewarding experience and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, so Shaz says, yeah, I get sweaty palms. I ramble on when uh, talking and some other things. Absolutely relatable. Um, let me think of another example. So recently, um, actually this week, my husband uh, and their company, uh, they did a potty, pottery painting class um, as an event, as a team building event. And my husband's very strong and it always he comes across as not having many fears. And he shared with me that evening, he said, oh, he painted this really beautiful bowl for me for, for Mother's Day. Um, and I would be so proud because he was so scared to put uh, a brush down onto, the, uh, onto his bowl to paint it. And he showed me a photo and no jokes. It had, he put a piece of tape in the middle and he painted the one side teal and then he pulled the tape off and he painted the other, painted the other side uh, like a salmon color. And that was what he did. So he painted it two colors, <laughs> just with a line in the middle. And I said to him, but what, what, what were you so fearful of? He said that the irony is that they knew they were going to do this. And so many people in their team actually put Pinterest boards together and they pulled out their phones and they said, okay, anybody who's too scared to put paint on, I've got a Pinterest board, come and have a look. And my husband was like, oh, let me have a look at that. I need an idea because I he stood there. He was frozen. He was so fearful to put paint down. Um, and then he broke through his fear. fear. And I mean, I giggled because I, I saw what he did, but I was so proud of him because he did it and he <laughs> pushed through that fear. And it's similar to painting on canvas. I mean, we've held so many big party um, um, arts and crafts party events where we painted canvases before. And um, I've noticed that adults are actually most fearful. And I remember one lady once said she couldn't sleep the night before because she was so scared of this uh, painting event. And painting on a canvas actually reminds me a lot of uh, building a small business as well, because building a business is not this black and white. Um, it's not a, a, a direct straight line of things that you do and follow. It's more of a like you put a bit of paint here and then you experiment, you have fun and it's never finished. Um, and if you don't like it, if something doesn't work, you try something new, you cover it up, perhaps you put it up on the wall, you take it down in future and you say, oh, this was not done. Let me add some more things. And that's the great thing is that 
you can experiment and have fun and you don't you're not restricted we're in a creative environment so the days of putting together a business plan when you want to start a club is gone um you need to just take the steps one by one and follow it slowly and keep your risks low um any of it so i'm i'm digressing okay let's think of another example um it would okay i'll send the view <laughs> shares i'll send i'll put, post it afterwards in the comments okay so let's think of another example so a mom in our community made contact with stefania myself years ago um and she wanted to start her own club her own kids club and then she paused out of fear i remember she had fears she said things like she was not tech savvy enough to start a club um because she had to do online marketing and she was not tech savvy enough and then she at some point she said um her time for a new venture passed um i think she was like late 30s <laughs> so she was very young um but she she believed that her time has passed um and then she's also mentioned that she had not clue how where to start she was scared to put her face online um just as you mentioned as well um I mean, we were all scared and she was scared she couldn't uh, afford to take the risk she had kids at school so she was worried about time she had to work in the day so when would she fit it in okay and the result basically was that she took no action zero growth occurred and she stayed super cozy tucked under a warm blanket with a hot cocoa with a marshmallow in in her comfort zone whilst feeling empty inside with this burning desire to do something that she is passionate about and that she loves and with this desire to make a change in kids lives but she was too scared to take the leap and she froze up so i can relate to that i can relate to freezing up um let me know if you can relate to that but there's there's a rainbow or there's a pot of gold at, at the end of this rainbow story so what happened then was she made contact with us years later and um she was actually a member in on on our online art subscription club with her kid and um she said to me that she actually loved this idea of this online subscription art art club that we run because it seems like um we do it uh you know you could do it over a weekend and it's only four lessons a month so it's not that much um and she she noted that maybe she could pre-record it on a saturday once a month and then just manage the comments and you know show up a little bit online that kind of thing um suddenly her attitude changed completely and it was it was not because she saw a new opportunity it was because uh, she had she changed what she believed and she acted to it so she said to me i can do this and suddenly she had the time isn't that ironic um she said she could do it over weekends and she could do it as i said um pre-record the videos and or wh whichever way she found out a way to make it happen um because whatever you believe you will react to so previously she believed that she couldn't do it not possible she scrapped it off her mind and then suddenly she had a change of heart and she was like oh she can do it it's quite powerful if you think about it and then um it reminded me this actually reminded me of a quote um the quote is i wrote it down here so um whether you think you can or you think you're or, th or you cheap is let me not let me re read that again whether you think you can or you think you can't you're right isn't that so powerful whether you think you can or you think you can't you're right um it's absolutely a mind thing and it's a belief in yourself and if you are legitimately afraid to move forward with whatever is freaking you out or whether it be starting an a kids craft kids arts and crafts club or going for more fertility tests or climbing that steel ladder um on lion's head um take a f take a few minutes just to think what is the first step that you can take just focus on the very next step don't try and think of all the things that can go wrong just try and think of the very next step okay let me know if this is relatable to you and um if you are still not convinced um and that you can break through your fears then i'm going to just quickly share an exercise um that Marie Folio shared um she so basically just you take a piece of paper and you write down two things so you start off with what is the worst thing that could absolutely happen so say for instance you wanted to start your own kids arts and crafts club think about what is the worst thing that could 
absolutely happen with you. So are you going to lose money? Remember now that if you're clever about it, you don't have to take a big risk. You can start small. I always say start small and grow into it. Um, it could be that you could shatter your ego. That was something that we were fearful of, Stefani and myself. Um, before, when we had our corporate jobs as an architect and an engineer, I was I was terribly afraid of what people would think of me. Um, you know what the joke is? When, when we started our kids' um, arts and crafts club, I started running classes um, in a local church just in the hall. And I remember being so hush about it. I did not share that I was doing it with friends because for me, it was a passion project at that stage. And I, I was just so worried what people would think of me. And then when I realized that I was actually de desperately in love with this new venture of mine, um, and when Stefani joined in, I realized that, you know what? <laughs> what what doesn't matter what they think of me and look at me now now they're looking at us and they're thinking gosh I'm so envious well that's what I believe um because they are stuck in their eight to fives and we've got freedom and flexibility so if you are worried about shattering your ego stop try and stop thinking about what other people think of you it could be that you are desperately afraid of um quitting your job if you if you think of what's the worst thing that could happen to you um i'm not suggesting that you should quit your job start small but if you had to quit your job what is the worst thing that could happen to you could it be that you have to like live with family um again uh just to get back on your feet whilst you do this um Previously in my career, um, in my entrepreneurial journey, I did this. If you are quite young, it could be something that, you know, that you are brave enough to do. Um, alternatively, start small and just do it on the side and do it as a hustle and, you know, work around it so that you don't have to have these fears about what's the worst, what the worst thing is that you could that could happen to you. Okay, now let's turn that exercise around and think about what is the best thing that could happen. Okay, so share in the comments, what do you think could be the best thing that could happen to you? So for those who have taken the leap, um, I can see the members in the community that's popped up. Um, for those who've taken the leap, what is the best thing that has happened to you? What has it made possible for you starting your own club? So let me share from um, our Kids Arts and Crafts Club perspective. So Stefani and I broke through our fears. As I said, we started small. Uh, we started with one club and running it, and then we grew and we started our online club as well. And we've got members from all over the world. But you know what? We eventually quit on our jobs, and this is basically what happened to us. So I made a list. I'm just going to get the key points here. So we got joy and happiness from doing what we were born to do. Stefani and I honestly believe that this was what we were born to do. So fulfillment from making a positive difference in the lives of kids, that is a very, very big um, thing for us. Just that fulfillment and seeing how kids develop, the skills they develop, how they grow, it is absolutely so rewarding. Empowering other creatives to grow their own arts and crafts clubs. So um, absolutely rewarding, absolutely amazing. Financial freedom for us. Um, having the recurring income every month, um, just getting that financial freedom that weren't there before. And then freedom to live anywhere we want. Um, okay, so you don't you didn't know this, but some of you may have. But um, we have a very big online component. And whilst uh, Lily and I were running our studio classes, Stefani was running all the online things. And she actually lived on a tropical island for 10 months last year. She moved to a tropical island with her husband and they lived right on the beach and they just did it because it was fun. So freedom to live anywhere you want. If you go, if you're going with the online route, then you get these kind of kind of new um, things that happens in your life that you could never have dreamed of. So travel and adventure. Um, OK, and then the other thing I wanted to note is that with our online component where we teach online um our online art club membership and also our online membership where we teach other creatives how to start and grow their own kids crafting clubs um the great thing about the online um the online model is that we suddenly have a global market so with our in-person classes we were restricted to cape town and surrounds um and we are still restricted and you don't need uh 300 kids to come through your door every week you only need 
whatever your ambitions are, you only need 20 or 100 a week. Um, and you could have an incredibly booming business. So whatever you are after and whatever excites you, but for us having that, that online component as well has opened up a global market for us. And we have members in over 15 countries. Um, and that is remarkable. I mean, I get so excited when I hear different accents, um, Scottish accents and British accents and American accents and our South African accents. I mean, it's it's just incredible. It's incredibly rewarding. And then um, for us, nonstop learning, growth and creativity is fundamental to what what makes us tick. So that has been absolutely amazing. One of the best things that has happened to us. Living a regret-free life, that was one. Please let me know as well what would be the best thing. Um, just let me know in the comments what would be the best thing for you. Um, so living a regret-free life. So previously as an architect, I remember waking up in the mornings very early, putting in the hard graph, sitting in front of my computer, going to site. The world, I almost perceived the world as gray. I did not see a lot of color. Um, I came back late at night only to like work again. It was long hours. I did not enjoy it. I was not personally that fulfilled. Um, and now I'm living a regret-free life. I'm doing what I love, what I'm passionate about. I'm making an impact. And that is what it's about for me. So another big thing for me personally is being there for my family. So seeing my son's milestones, being part of his life, being able to have the flexibility to take him to school, um, to do outings in the afternoons on Sundays, that kind of thing. It really, really gives me that, um, you know, the joy of being part of his life. Um, so for me, I personally got my joy and my passion back when I took the leap, broke through my fears um, and moved forward. So for those who have taken the leap, um, let me know, what did it make possible for you? Um, okay, then as a final reminder, I think I should wrap up now. Um, I want you to think about you, you, I know that the other fears that came through was time and money. That was also two big things. And I'll go live in a couple of weeks as well with those topics. But um, I want you to think about doing it in a, in a way that is risk-free. So the days where you need a business plan, um, those days are in the past. You don't need to put a 20-page <laughs> academic document together. Um, what you need to do is you just need to start small, take the first step and move forward and create that snowball effect. Um, so you could it could be that you start with classes just on a Saturday morning and you grow into it. It could be that you start an online club and you record pre-record videos in, on a weekend and you upload them, you drip them out once a week, or it could be that you go live um, on your online art class um, uh, members in your online art class members group and you teach online like that or on a Zoom class and you do it um, with different time zones. So you could do it any time of the day, that kind of thing. And then people can watch the replay. So there's many, so many different opportunities, especially now. Um, figure out what gives you energy. Um, I would I'd say start small and grow into it because as I said, with that canvas, it could be that um, you try something and you don't enjoy it as much and then you move on to something else in the same, you know, creative uh, realm of kids' arts and crafts classes. And um, and then you figure out what gives you energy because that's what life's about. Start small and just grow into it and just take that first step. Just take that first step. Don't try and think of all the things that can go wrong because I tend to do that as well. Um I'm going to follow the advice of my dear friend and I'm just going to take the first step with my fears. And um, remember, you don't have to get it right. You just have to get it going. Once you get it going, it will start falling into place. Stefania, thanks for this needed this talk today. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think I'm going to wrap up. Um, if you watch this a bit later, take part in the comments and give us your feedback as well, because we're all in this together. We're a creative community. We're a creative family and I'm rooting for you. Stefania and I are your biggest cheerleaders and we're rooting for you. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone. And we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks for tuning in live. Bye.